perfect. So it's a, it's great pleasure that I welcome our second uh, facilitators for today, Jane Kesey and Anne Holm. Uh, I always think it's really funny to read Jane Kesey's bio because anyone who can say she's written 20 plus books and doesn't have to list them, you just have to take your hat off for. Jane is also a, a fabulous contributor to our type community, as is Anne. They're always able to contribute content that's relevant, interesting, and uh, thought-provoking. So with no more ado, I want to pass over to Jane and Anne. And I am just going to pull up our slides so that we can start in an organized way. And uh, this is going to be a conversational presentation, a little different than uh, what we would have done if we were all in the room together. And I think the first question we have to answer is why the heck are we talking about two American presidents? Well, you notice we went way uh, into the past, 100 years ago, to find great examples of what our leaders can look like. But uh, the main reason we chose uh, Theodore Roosevelt as our main uh, focus this morning is because of the book, The Bully Pulpit, written about him. The, uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin is one of our greatest historians, and this book, uh, you can't make it up. It's just, it's fabulously written. It goes from the childhood through the end of the lives of uh, Roosevelt and Taft, and also their wives, and the founders of McClure's Magazine, which was the original, uh, the people who figured out how to do true investigative journalism. And so you've got six people that you can amazingly type within this book. And I started reading this book uh, last year. It was the 100th anniversary of uh, Roosevelt's death, actually, if you want to place him in history. And I said to Anne, boy, you've got to read this. I'm just fascinated trying to figure out who the heck uh, Teddy was. And uh, Teddy's on the right in this cartoon. You'll notice we've gone to a, a photo album to try and uh, introduce you to these two. And if you're worried and thinking, I don't know anything about these two, neither did we really, other than some of the stereotype stuff that's out there. So we'll be trying to introduce you to them as we talk about what their type might be. Uh, but really our goal this morning is to, you know, out on the internet, there are so many examples of poor typing of uh, historical figures, current figures, uh, misusing type to come up with your own personality types. And so we really wanted to talk in general about what does it take to figure out the type of another person and how can we do it as, as well and as thoroughly as possible and where does it go wrong? And what do you want to add before we start? Well, I want to add that we've been doing this uh, for a really long time. So we read books, Catherine the Great, what did you think her type was? And we'd go back and forth on various historical figures. Um, and so we've, we've really been thinking about this concept for a long time, this idea of, well, wouldn't it be fun to get a, bun a lot of really good type minds into a room and start talking about this and really start talking about the techniques we use and what we're noticing and uh, our own biases. I mean, it's a very rich discussion, and we've really kind of had this on the, the, on the on, on our on our minds for a long time to try this kind of a session, uh, because we all do type from afar, um, but we sometimes we don't go far enough. Is what what we learned. Is uh, did anyone actually manage to read? the bully pulpit or listen to it. I want to emphasize, uh, it's like Downton Abbey and Game of Thrones put together. It's just an amazing book. If, if uh, you did manage to read it, you can actually physically raise your hands for those of you who've got cameras or also on the participant list. You can um, put yes or no in the participant list if you don't have a camera on, just so that we get an idea. It seems like quite a few people did read then. Wow. Wonderful. That... Good, then we're going to have great discussions. Yeah. Uh, you know, Anne went out to the internet uh, and just looked at all the different types that people say Teddy Roosevelt was. He was known as Teddy as a boy. Uh, there he is at about the age of five. He did come from an extremely wealthy family, uh, which is, you know, part of the background and what made him who he is. But here's what comes up. Uh, Kiersey, in his book on presidential types, uh, had him as an ESTP. Cash Kihi, who's a member <clears throat> of the type community in the United States, has him as an ENTJ. 
And then you see the other various types that are out there on uh, the internet as to what Theodore Roosevelt might have been. Any other comments on that, Anne? No, just that, you know, you can, you can see sort of a, a, you know, a consistency of at least, you know, ENP, e except for the one J. Um, and so, you know, that's, and, and this is basically what you see. And this is people making, uh, typing from afar. And, um, and this is, this is what we've got. And then it ends up becoming the authority you know, like famous ENTPs or famous ESTPs, and then the name pops up, and then you think, oh, yeah, okay, well, somebody said it, so it must be true. So, And I think you, know, you, get, you get the stereotyping here, because for those of you who don't know anything about Theodore Roosevelt, he organized a, a platoon called the Rough Riders during the Spanish-American War in 1898. And actually, they were called the Rough Riders. And it was a group of both the cowboys he had uh, gotten to know so well in his years out in the badlands of South Dakota, and the uh, attendees of our equivalents of Eaton and Harrow. Uh, so they, they had learned all their horseback riding skills playing polo. And they were all in this group called the Rough Riders. And Roosevelt actually led the charge up San Juan Hill himself. That was the um, icon of that, that short war. Uh, he also was the huge supporter of the founding of our national parks, that outdoor drive that he said, you know, people need nature and made sure that Yellowstone and the Grand Canyon and the Grand Tetons and our, our magnificent national parks came into being. And then he was known for action and adventure. His African safaris, his, uh, you know, he was as good on a horse as he was in a boxing ring. So, you know, it, it, it's like the, the ESTP stereotype, you can see where it comes from. Anything else to add there, Anne? Um, no, this is, this is good. Okay. So, you know, we've, we've been talking about Teddy for a year. Uh, you know, we put on our, our expert glasses here that we received a few years ago at the uh, Psychological Type Conference. Thank you very much, Angelina. And, you know, tried to use our crystal ball to figure out who he was. And this, this was our first uh, personal guesses as to, as to uh, what we thought he was. And a lot of the conversations we had trying to figure it out. Um, and I think, you know, a couple of the really strong ones on my side, when, uh, one, one of the things about Teddy he was, uh, I think, 22 when he married his, his first love. And she died in childbirth when they were 24. And on that same day in the same house, his mother died as well. And Roosevelt turned his baby daughter over to his sister and left for the plains of South Dakota and spent at least a year out there uh, working the ranch, working directly with the ranch hands, learning how to ride and shoot. and. Uh, you know, spent his time in contemplation. He burned all of the uh, evidence of his first wife. I think there was one picture left of her, all their letters, everything else. And he walked around the plains of South Dakota reading Tolstoy, Anna Karenina, when he was 23. And I kept saying to Anne, I'm married to an ESTP. I don't care, you know, what has happened in their life. At age 23, they're not going to be reading Anna Karenina. It was just one of my things that I came up with. Uh, so we went back and forth. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, so some of the things that, that, these are some of the things we talked about. The other thing is that Roosevelt wrote 40 books, and I just couldn't see an ESTP writing the range of books that he did, uh, not just about his safari experiences, but about politics and about other big issues. And Anne, maybe you want to talk about some of the things that caught your interest. Well, so early on, I, I was uh, actually, uh, because I'd seen ESTP come up, quite a bit in ENTP. Those were the two filters I started looking through. And I, you know, started looking for things like um, uh, Taft, for instance, had said that um, Roosevelt was uh, very spontaneous. You know, just he was very decisive and very spontaneous. And so, oh, okay, that sounds like, you know, somebody who's in the moment and okay, that fits with the ESTP. Um, I thought about the the in charge, so 
um, yeah, yeah, ESTP, that, that could work. Uh, then that would eliminate ENTP if, it, if he seemed, you know, if he was an in charge thing person, because that's not the ENTP uh, interaction style. Um, I even uh, dug up uh, Angelina's book on type development as I was doing this to see, you know, what, what this could be. Could this be learned behavior? Could this be, you know, uh, just or, or not? And, and what does it look like developmentally? So um, the more I dug into it, the more I was not very sure about ESTP. But this was my original thought was probably STP because of the in charge style. And I think one of the conversations that started helping us focus was when I, st uh, one, one of the stories that has always stuck with me from the book was Teddy was the youngest person ever uh, elected to the New York state legislature. He was 23 when he got that post and it was because of his father's political connections and he was seen as a rising star. But he would charge into the legislature when he thought they weren't doing the right thing and just yell at people. And um, there's a quote in the, in the quotes we handed out on all of this. And I said to Anne, I don't think that's spontaneity. I think it's what Dario Nardi describes as the decision highway where you quickly take in information and it filters through your sense of logic and, and your matrix of how you look at the world and you instantaneously make a decision. And mm -hmm. We see that in uh, ESTJ, ENFJ, and ENTJ, and so that that it's it's like that was a turning point. Going, you're right. It's to, we, we both said it's decision highway. It's not spont spontaneity because uh, he knows what he wants to do, which was part of that crusader piece. That yeah, and that, bringing that, up. that shifted the the lens considerably when we started looking at it not from this from the spontaneity perspective but from could this actually be the decision superhighway we're looking at and then that throws in another type into the mix potentially ENFJ. So what we want to do in the next uh, time that we have is we're going to be using uh, yeah we discussed it for a year but we're going to be using uh, selfawarenessexperts.com one of their tools developed by this outstanding group of type experts that you know here to have an informal discussion to condense into about 10 minutes the discussion we've been having for a year. There you see Teddy with his uh, family, uh, including his first daughter, I do think, and his second wife. And uh, then we're going to put you into breakout rooms to talk about William Howard Taft and what his type might have been. And then we'll come back together to talk about the preference or the the principles that we've come up with in typing from afar, which hopefully we will illustrate as we go through this process. So I need to uh, share my screen as Anne shares other wisdom on what we're talking about, and I will pull up this other thing that we are going to do. And yeah. Yeah. So as you're pulling it up, I just want to comment that, you know, Jane mentioned that we started talking about this uh, for a year. Part of it's because the book is so long, so it would you know, we would, the discussion would go on for that period of time, partly because the, the book is so long, but um, we, we went back and forth with lots and lots of text messages. You know, I would be walking, listening to the book, I, and I'd hear something, and I'd stop the book, and I'd send something over to Jane and say, you know, this, this kind of caught my attention, and I'm starting to think maybe he could be this, and, um, and then she'd respond and back and forth, back and forth. It was really, really, really fun to do that, uh, to, go, to go back and forth about this. Um, but then ultimately, when we, were, when we were talking about, okay, we got to get this ready for BAPT. Um, and I was like, I'm going to go through and look at some quotes here and see if we can get some stuff for the handouts that I said, Jane, let's look at this one more time. And, um, and then it really got interesting and fun. So this is one of uh, many tools at uh, self-awareness experts to help people figure out their personality type that Sterling and Catherine and Jean and Sean and Rebecca have come up with. And uh, this is their swipe left, swipe right, which normally wouldn't be the first tool, but given our virtual conference uh, bit here, uh, our initial thought was we would have tossed a bunch of these quotes out on the table and had a, you know, 
free ranging or freewheeling discussion in the room, which we obviously can't do with this. So, uh, Ann and I are going to go through some of these not, and swipe left and not, swipe right. We're not, not see, right. we're not seeing a screen, Jane. You're not seeing that. Okay. No. Um, I'm going to interrupt go. from oh. now on if we don't see the screen. I'm, I've been waiting politely, but then yeah. we get three chats. Um, so it's, we're gonna, stop no, no, that's, that's perfect. Okay. So I'm going to try this again to share. Let's see. I have to open it again because um, we're just going to start from the start and make sure that we get this. So sorry about that. Um, so this is uh, Anne's and my attempt to do something a little different in a virtual arena, and we hope you all enjoy it, would be my way of describing what we're going to do here. And I need to open another window and put this in. I thought I had this all set up, but of course. That's no problem. Just picking a different screen, isn't it, to share? <sighs> no, well, I'm opening it all up because it was working yesterday. Okay, so now I've got that. I'm going to start it so that it's open. Close that piece down. Now if I pick it to share, it should be right there. Share. Yeah. How's that? Got it. Oh. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All you got it. Dang. <laughs> It could be this. It could be that Zoom is being slow, Jane. That could be what's going on too. So I'm sure it was my fault. Okay, so we got to go fast <laughs> here. So um, this is how would a friend describe your typical bad day? So thinking about Teddy when he was not at his best, um, you know, he really wasn't competitive. He was simply driven. What do you think, Ann? Yeah. No, I don't. I, I when you read the 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 full range of behavior, no, not okay. And there was no, he never, ever looked at the rules. As a matter of fact, when he was in law school, he said, law, um, it's only figuring out how to apply the rules. It never looks at whether the rules are right in the first place. So definitely that way. Control freak? Mm, swipe left. <laughs> Zealous crusader. Anne, take that one. <laughs> swipe right so far. He took on... Uh, the, uh, the the trusts, which are the, you know, they were the railroad trusts and the oil trusts and the coal miner trusts. These were huge, huge, huge entities that controlled a big swath of the economy in the United States. And he took them on. Zealous. Yeah. Um, you know, overly sensitive. He really wasn't. I mean, he took tons and tons of criticism in the press. He was seen as too, you know, he took over the presidency after President McKinley was assassinated and people were appalled that this cowboy uh, was suddenly president and it didn't bug him at all. He just went ahead with his agenda. Mm -hmm. So on a bad day, stubborn judge. Um, he yeah. was one and done. If you, if you crossed him, you were off his list forever. Yeah, yeah, I, and I, yeah, absolutely. All over the place? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> tunnel vision? Um, I would say yes, on, on his bad days, tunnel vision. Yeah, and it went from, you know, like he would be a crusader. He, uh, one of the things that went on at the turn of the century was in the tenements of New York, you'd have whole families stuck in a room rolling cigars for peace money, you know, a penny a cigar or whatever. And once he saw the conditions, nothing could stop him from trying to um, change the laws or what went on with police officers not doing their duty. Um, he actually lost the election because he went after the system without um, having the politics in place to actually make the changes that needed to be done. So tunnel vision was for sure. Can I throw something in there really quick on the tunnel vision too, because it's really important. Um, he, uh, there was a, the, the Spanish-American War and um, he was, his comment was that the Americans were losing their so, so, soldierly virtues. And so he really was, would rather, he said he would rather welcome a foreign war. He had this really romantic uh, tunnel vision version of what war actually looked like. And I think that on a bad day, people would be saying to him, hey, hey, look at the big picture here. You're talking about war. And he's talking about soldierly virtues as being the important thing to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Axe wielder, he, ne he never really did that run in and chop apart with no, um, 
attention to the people involved. So I'm going to swipe left. Swipe left, yeah. Never. Yep. Idle wandering, uh-uh. High strung. I don't think so. A high energy, but I don't think, uh, nah. Swipe yeah, left. high energy, definitely. Analysis paralysis, no. Decision highway is what we saw over and over. Yep. Demanding meddler. I think he'd go right on that one. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, on the other hand, he knew some of his boundaries. One of my favorite quotes is, uh, you know, his, his eldest daughter was uh, with his sister for the first three years of his life. And then his new wife said, well, that's hardly nice. Let's bring her back to our house. So she was torn apart from the only mother she'd known. And by the time she was in her 20s, she, um, she had a bit of a reputation in New York. And another cousin contacted Roosevelt, who is now president, and said, you know, your daughter Alice is uh, really kind of cutting, uh, cutting up the town in a non-ladylike way. And Roosevelt said, you know, I can handle uh, running the country or I can run Alice, but I can't do both. Uh, so he knew his limits, and yet there was no issue that he wouldn't take part in. So I, which would, way do you I was going to say he stuck his head right into those trusts. And yeah. if you were one of the people who was, had high stakes in that, he would be a demanding meddler. Mm -hmm. and, and on the stubborn side, you know, he said he would not run for more than two terms of the presidency. And then when Taft turned out to be a weak leader, because um, Taft was elected right after him, he'd been his vice president and then took the presidency and was a very mediocre president. Um, and the agenda that Roosevelt felt so strongly about wasn't going through. Um, Roosevelt stepped right in ran for president again, which meant that uh, he actually formed his own party, uh, the Progressive Party, and so both the Progressives and the Republicans lost. He was so stubborn that he um, actually lost everything. Um, stubborn, demanding so, meddler. <laughs> yeah. Scattered pushing. No, it was yeah. focused pushing. Very lazy. Blocked agenda. Uh -huh. Right? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Too late. I already did it. <laughs> well, and I agree too because he was he was all about the progressive movement. But yeah, yeah. so okay. and and just notice for the the poor British and Europeans on the line. Yes, the Republicans used to be the Progressive Party and the Democrats the Conservative Party. Yeah. It keeps going back and forth. Um, yeah. How would a friend describe your typical good days? Innovation expert. Uh, I think we agreed he's not an immigrant innovator, right? Right, right. We sent him dependable partner. Yeah, I think so. His relate well, I would say absolutely because the relationships were the most important thing to him. Relationships with the press, relationships with the with anybody he came in contact with. He shook hands constantly. Yeah. So there's that quote on he lined everybody up and had an individual conversation with each one. Just he loved that. Um efficient leader. I don't um I he was a driven leader. I don't think he was an efficient leader. He was an no. inspiring leader. Philosophical thinker. Uh uh. Yeah. No, you don't think he was? Effective okay. motivator, yes. Yes. He was known as a very effective communicator. People listened to his speeches. Mm -hmm. Practical thinker. No, if he'd been practical, just for example, I mean, he went out on the streets of New York and followed police officers around, figuring out who was and wasn't doing their jobs. Um, and uh, when he was in city government, and he didn't have the practical side of figuring out how to use that information effectively. Can I just ask quickly, uh, someone's raised a hand. Um, Asha, you raised your hand. Is there something you wanted to ask? Sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to check in. If, it, if there is, can you pop it in chat and I'll check it for you. So sorry to interrupt, go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Friendly networker, this is an absolute yes. He was, at, the more people, the better. He worked all day and then played and had parties all night. He loved people. Mm -hmm. Yes, on the visionary planner as well. Yeah. Uh, that's what the, Trying all, to carry the, progressive, the progressive movement was all about visionary planning. And, and you know, he studied leadership. He, he there, there's some fabulous quotes about him reading Lincoln and learning never ever to hold a grudge, to be vindictive, to come around for revenge. Um, he knew what he was doing uh, in the style he wanted to lead. So can we go right, Anne? We absolutely go right. Okay, practical partner. No, I think that's what his wife was for. Yep. Achievement motivator. 
it was never about the achievement. It was about doing what was right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I, System thinker. Uh-uh. No, this no. was the big problem. He, he went after what was right rather than what it would take to affect change for the most part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Troubleshooting expert. No. Mm -mm. No. Holistic planner. You know, I, I think of the coal mining episode. Um, the coal miners were going on strike. The monopolies were continuing to take down the pay that the uh, workers received. And he actually, at this point, now that he was president of the United States, made the move of talking to actual coal workers, the heads of the union, the uh, owners of the monopolies, who of course were his peers, and got all their viewpoints and figured out how to stop the strike, which would have ended in violence in the particular towns, and um, let the owners save face and get the workers the conditions they needed. So as he grew and matured and you know, learned the ramifications of things, he really did start to do this what you know in those years when he had power to do it when he was in office and that's actually what bully pulpit means good pulpit it doesn't mean bullying people around it was like this is the bulliest job in the world you can get things done this is the best place to be and yeah. this is just a yes yep yep methodical planner not on your life no nope. and uh going on to the next as and we'll do this one just a little faster because you're getting the idea, think, I think, of what we think of um, te Teddy. So what stresses you or makes working in a group um, difficult? Lack of flexibility in the long-term mission. I don't think he'd even know. I mean, all he wants is going after the values that he's going after. So, yeah. Um, disconnect between personal traditions and the mission. He didn't have personal traditions. That's just not who he was. Mm -hmm. Too many abstract. <laughs> the it, let's just look at the uh, the romantic side of the soldier. He was all about abstract concepts. Yeah. I think I went that the wrong way on really that. Really stressful to him. The lack of respect for individuals and people. That would be highly yeah. stressful. Not enough communication would stress him out a lot. Um. That would he not. Was known for emotions. Yeah, but that would not stress him. If there were not enough interaction with others, he'd go nuts. Yep. Um, too many short-term details and others ignoring the long-term implications. Yes, that, um, would, that would stress him. Stressful. And no clear goals, that would stress him a lot. Yep. You know, as a matter of fact, when he was leaving the presidency, this was one of his concerns, that he wouldn't have goals. And so he uh, had, he scheduled his African safari and everything, because he was only going to, he wasn't even 50 when he left the presidency, and he knew he needed um, big things to do. Um, this did, this did hurt, yep. um, too much conflict to turn, turn the mission. Mm -hmm. Um, I, that would bother him also. Yep. Too many that illogical, would he wouldn't nope. notice. Mm -mm. No ability to make short term adjustments. Can you see how we're sort of uh, moving? So you can kind of guess maybe what personality type we're thinking, I think. And can you see what's, what is being eliminated as we go deeper and deeper? What? What uh, there's there's one that's really sticking out as a letter that you got to get rid of pretty fast. Yeah, not enough time to align current actions with the long term strategy. He wouldn't even notice. Mm -hmm. A little in the mission that generates enthusiasm. This would drive him nuts because it's all about getting people excited yeah. about things. Lack of focus and commitment. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's. Um, more to how self-awareness experts worse works. We're going to um, go back to the slides here and come into that. And you know what I have to do before I can do that is close down. I bet I've still got it in presentation mode. Just one second. Oh, it's popped back on. There it is. Yay. Is it up? Yep. Can everybody see it if I? Yep. Yeah, it needs to be in full screen, but. It's okay, fine. there we go. Okay. So um, when we did this the other day, you can see the results now from our swiping on self-awareness experts. And the two types that came up are ENFJ and INFP that we were completely consistent on. And let's just say uh, there, in, no, in no universe was Teddy an introvert. There is no way that he, I mean, I, I think one story we missed is how he uh, 
in childhood that, you know, they pretty much lived on their estate in New York and uh, Teddy just organized everything that went on for all his cousins and siblings. And so then when he got to Harvard, he just assumed everybody would take his lead and he continued to organize everything. But of course he had to learn that not everyone wanted his ideas. Um, it, there was no way he was an introvert. Uh, he, and, and tell about the teddy bear. So the, the, one of the most interesting things, and I don't know if you know this, but a teddy bear is actually named for Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. That was his, the degree of impact he had on people of all stripes, top to bottom. This teddy bear was made, the teddy bear was invented because of Teddy Roosevelt. And um, so when you start thinking about F versus T, in this whole equation, you're really talking about a, a person who had a very, very strong people uh, orientation. And so all of the ones that were listed on the websites about what his personality type was, not a single one of them had F because why? What were they looking at? They were looking at the, you know, the rough rider and the this and the that, but they really didn't focus on this people element, which was the number one thing uh, once we looked at this more deeply. Yeah, it's, um, and I think it, it's that decision highway piece also. Yes. And uh, an, a male brought up in the 1870s uh, where you would have had this emphasis on being the classic uh, independent American man that, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're T or F, some, those, those activities would have been important. You know, you would um, learn how to do some of those outdoor activities, especially he had asthma as a child. And so uh, he almost died several times. Uh, there's a quote uh, talking about how his father helped him develop a program to build up his body. So out of his values for, um, you know, getting his lungs to be strong and his body to be strong, that became a lifelong commitment to physical activity that... Um, is is learned behavior it's not personality type now aga just said his daughter seemed to want and lack attention he might have emotional blocks suggesting no extroverted feeling any comments on that well extroverted feeling um you know remember it's about upholding values and ensuring that the group is working well uh what i want to say i mean he introverted feeling is the realm of being able to deal with his wife's death and he didn't do well with it, nor was he nurtured in being how to, in, in how to do it. Um, I also think, you know, losing your mother and your wife on the same day, uh, a lot of people would have trouble with it. And there was no analyst to talk with. He did a terrible job with his eldest daughter. He did a pretty good job with his other kids. The other um, and, thing I would add to that, Jane, too, is, is that, you know, the day-to-day the -day care, which you would might see more in an, an ESFJ, being a bit more attentive to what does somebody need right now versus, you know, the extroverted feeling in the ENFJ um, model or in the ENFJ uh, archetype. They're different. And I think, you know, with what we know about detachment disorder, um, it was probably right for him to turn his daughter over to his sister in the moment when his wife died in 1884. Mm -hmm. um, he, he had no capacity to cope with raising a, a infant that wasn't 24 hours old. Mm -hmm. And then when his wife, at, his second wife, who was actually his high school sweetheart, um, said, this, we've got to get Alice back into our household, uh, in a, with what we know about detachment disorder, um, kind of the damage was done. And she was suspicious and other things. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know that, I know, I know lots of ENFJs who do struggle with some personal relationships. I think we do that with all personality types. And so, yeah. you know, th this is one of our principles. We want to look at the whole scope of things. And yeah. what we yeah. see is a, a values crusader, you know, not, not a systems thinker like an ENTJ and no spontaneity like a ESTP in troubleshooting. You know, these are, these are long-term goals that he works toward um, is really where we came to our, our choices. And um, also, also remembering that we've got to look at the outside influences, which is what we want to yeah. make um, the strong, well, we want to say um, Sterling and Catherine and the, and the other players at Self-Awareness Experts, after the session today, you'll all get a chance to go out and play with their tools. You'll get a uh, invite 
on how it works and how you can use it. And uh, I hope you have some fun with Swipe Left and Swipe Right and their other tools um, to see for yourself uh, how they're trying to develop a different way for people to land on their best fit type. And, uh, and can I highlight, I, I, I really appreciate what you're doing here because it's so simple to just go, oh, well, this person looks like a dee da dee da dee da and there are so many different layers of how to be considered to stop people doing that. So it's just a great example of this in action, I think. Yeah. Well, I hope you got that just in our conversation. We did not, you know, we went from ESTP and ENTJ to ENFJ. And you can argue with us. We, you know, we could go into the chat rooms and continue the, the conversation on Teddy. But we thought it'd be more fun to shift over to William Howard Taft, who... Yeah. Um, a couple of things. We're going to send you into chat rooms in just a second, randomly assigning you. And uh, he was vice president uh, 19, right after uh, to, to Teddy's second term, and then uh, president right after uh, Teddy groomed him for that role. He never wanted it. He wanted to be a Supreme Court justice. Uh, but uh, what was his wife's name, Anne? Uh, Nellie. Nellie went to a party at the White House when she was 16 and decided she wanted to marry someone who would become president of the United States. And was very, when, when Taft was younger, it was his father who was pushing him and F, uh, Nellie took over that role. So as you're in your breakout rooms, thinking about Taft's type, keep in mind the outside influences that play into who someone becomes. You've got three pages of quotes that you can use. There's one quote in uh, the Roosevelt pages that are the first three pages that compares the two of them. Uh, Taft was a golf player, not a uh, outdoorsman. But take a look at this. The guy was not only president, but also chief justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. He actually did make that role um, nine years after he left the presidency, one year after Roosevelt died. Um, so in the chat rooms, and we're going to give you... Um, We'll, we'll come back together at uh, 20 after the hour, Susan. Um, okay. But uh, both see if you, we're going to have a poll after the, that everybody will answer individually on what type preferences you think Taft might have had. And Ann and I've gone around the circles uh, in the last year on him as well. And then we're going to talk about the useful principles for ethically and accurately typing from afar. So Susan, if you want to break them out. I'll pop um, you into breakout rooms. When it, when it does it, uh, the handouts should be on chat. If you haven't seen it already, Jane and Anne, if you just decline going to the breakout room, you'll stay in the general session. But I will check in with you because otherwise you'll be popped automatically into breakout rooms. Okay. okay. So let me just hang on. I've got to recreate the rooms here. So Pull first just so we capture what preferences we think Taft may have held as we engage hopefully ethically and typing from afar. All right, so there'll be four questions here. So one on obviously E and I, one on S and N, one on CNF, and one on JMP. Launch polling. Come on, here we are. are you seeing it? Don't see the poll, just the tiles, but maybe not yet. Maybe speaker view. It sends. It says now attenders are now viewing questions. Not yet. Not yet. It's the live. polls do. The polls do seem to be delayed at the moment. I'll wait just a second or so. Mm. Still not seeing it. I'll get to 30 seconds and I'll end polling and try it again. Yeah, let me end polling and try it again. And if not, let's relaunch polling. And if not, we could ask people to put the ideas into chat. Yep. Continue. Probably just Russian interference, so not to worry. There we are. Is there just the one question? It's four questions. So it's EI, it's SN. It's just the preferences. It's, it's yeah. the preferences, but it has to be done in four questions, the, the way the poll's set up. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, just type them in. let's just type whole, cha whole yeah. type into um, the chat room it's, and just see what we get. So everybody open the chat room and just type in for fun. Open the chat box and just type in. Yeah. Yeah. All four? All four preferences, yeah, all please. Four. Yes. All right. I'm going to read them off. ISFJ, ISFP, 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 INTP, ISFP, ISFJ, ISFP. Oh, against a, ESFP, now look at this. INTP, 
so far we're getting all the behind the scenes guesses, which is uh -huh. what we were talking about when you were in discussions. Just a yeah. few E's here, ISFJ, ISFP, ISFJ, ISFP. Right. Wonderful. You know, and 28, so, 30, and yep. yep. Okay, here we go, ISTJ. Oh, they talked about ISTJ. Yeah. And you seem to enjoy intellectual debating and <laughs> contemplation. <laughs> So, no, we all. <laughs> you know, I'm, I think, you know, one of the things that, that really comes out is how helpful interaction styles are. It's the, it's the piece we see most obviously, and uh, there's a lot of truth into how it um, plays out in um, what actually becomes uh, the person's type, because it is how we present ourselves, even as we have um, personas. Uh, just as... Um, I'm going to pull up my slides again, or, or any comments about your dis discussions or um, factors that uh, you realize were really important as we try and type from afar. ISFJ and ISFP, uh, it says we couldn't really decide between ISFJ and ISFP. Um, what do you think would, have, what kind of information would, would break the difference, do you think? What, what, do, you, what do you think would... What would you be looking Can for? Can I speak on that? I'll, I'll yeah, speak on that one if that's okay. Um, so yeah, we were really tossing around between those two ISFJ and ISFP. And what the, the question for me that I couldn't quite see in the text was um, seeing introverted feeling as a dominant function. Mm -hmm. So I saw FJ quite a lot, um, but I couldn't see the FI. And with FJ, you know, the highly developed social intelligence but he was less discerning of his own strengths and weakness, which indicated to me that the feeling was sort of more outward than, than inward, you know, the smiling countenance, the gentle giant. But then, um, you know, it sort of threw me off again when he had things like tendency towards laziness and procrastination oh. that was natural for him. And also the fact that he danced, his, he danced his way around all these sort of balls that he went to, I thought was significantly SP rather than that. That stuck out in my mind too. We were talking about- I was about, like, oh yeah, he's really- <laughs> big, The big guy who's so, agile. Yeah, but other than that, I couldn't really see introverted feeling. So yeah, I'm, still, I'm still in the land of the undecided. <laughs> Catherine, Catherine's group, Catherine Hirsch's group talked about procrastination as an issue and that made, might make it feel more like a perceiving preference. Mm -hmm. Can I say and something? It, it about really. Procrastination? Yes, Angelina. We, Go we ahead, had Angelina. We had that discussion in our group, and um, I still went for ISFJ because I know that sometimes ISJs, they're not procrastinating, but they can be hesitant to get to that decision point because they want to make sure they've got it right. Yeah. So it might look like procrastination. So it might be that sort of little anxious thing more than. Yeah. 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 Sterling, go ahead and uh, put in your two points about ISFP. And Angelina, I agree that I still go back on that because well, the, the perfectionism yeah. in the ISFJ can definitely do that. Um, a, a couple of things. Um, one is, is that um, one of my good friends, um, and I do a lot of ballroom dancing, is in the ballroom world. And he has ISFP preferences. And the descriptions of Taft dancing are almost an, like a mirror to him. And so he's overweight. And, but he dances into people's hearts and he loves the dance and he loves the interaction and he's fast and light on his feet and it's like a miracle watching him dance. And you would never guess that. And that just immediately spoke to me from my own experiences with, in the dancing world with ISFP preferences. And uh, something I really saw was his love of law was coming from introverted feeling, Thing. right? That that's that, 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 you know, real, that judging, pro his judging processes were an introverted feeling um, and so that really spoke to me of his love there. Uh, and so that's, so both of those to me leaned me towards ISFP preferences. I wanted to say the other thing too, is I felt a, in, in looking at Taft as a, more of an easygoing personality uh, versus um, ISFJs, which tend in my view to look a little bit more serious. Um, and um, mm. well, a, a, apart from the dancing, which stood out, um, several times, I thought. I thought about the easygoing uh, piece of his persona, the relaxed yeah. uh, per per persona. And you know, this is where um, it can be hard. You know, I was raised by an ISFJ mother, 
And it could be hard to separate my experiences with her and take a fresh look at Taft as possibly being an ISFJ, just because she was um, hesitant physically. Um, yes, you saw that perfectionism, but it was different and um, not the kind of warm persona that comes up again and again and again in descriptions of Taft. So I'm still entertaining uh, ISFJ, but Ann and I did settle on ISFP. Um, definitely behind the scenes though, even um, and I, you think of all the stereotypes of ISFPs that we run into that just bash them uh, for, you know, well, they're um, going to be gardeners or they'll work with animals. And here you've got uh, one that definitely, um, you know, I mean, yes, everybody can be, every type could be president of the United States, could be a Supreme Court justice, could go to law school. They're going to do different things with it. Um, so, uh, you know, we're coming to the, go ahead. The the all the focus on um, the getting things right in society and using their their powers to be able to do that. Other people were reading as as extroverted feeling, and mm. I think introverted feeling it it speaks of you know deeply held principles rather than necessarily making people happy. I agree. I completely agree. Thank so you. So I saw it as introverted feeling. Yeah. Um, and, and that, that's where we landed. And also, it, don't forget sorry. lens of temperament also. We've talked about a lot of different lenses. So let's not forget the lens of temperament. And are you looking at um, an SJ or an SP? Wouldn't you say that SPs are lazy and fun-loving and they would go dancing and they're pretty easygoing? No, Susan? Be very careful about any sort of lazy words because that's a judgmental word. Oh, I know that's why I'm saying it because it needs I'm finding to finding easier ways to do things, which actually is pretty yeah. smart, <laughs> rather than yeah. wasting yeah. necessary yeah. energy. Well, that's that's what I'm saying is that so many people stereotype the SPs in ways that that would preclude them from saying Taft could possibly be an SP. Yeah. Uh, and that's obviously we want to have best practices and we know that every type can all types are equal in terms of what they can achieve. There is no relationship to um, ability with personality type. And so we love this example because, um, you know, Taft really has to have been one of these behind the scenes types. So just um, I don't think we got to start late and uh, it's uh half past the hour. So I just want to bring us to the conclusion, you know, as, as we look at this, one of the most important things is you can't type someone in the moment. You've got to have the trajectory of life, which is why we looked at this book over some of the other um, examples we could use. The book actually has on all six of the main characters, their childhood. We didn't even get into Sam McClure and Ida um, Tarvel, this, this magnificent early female journalist. Um, but how they were educated, their families of origin and their spouses, their careers, what they did well and where they really failed. Um, we have to remember that people wear a public persona. Uh, I do, Ann does, Susan does, all of us do, let alone if you're a public figure um, versus privately how we operate. Uh, this piece of who helped shape who they became um, is so clear in this book. The, the richness of the letters that Doris Kearns Goodwin tapped in the um, views of the investigative journalists who wrote down the stories um, really make these people come to life from, uh, you know, you know what the influences were. Uh, we've talked so much about multiple lenses, which is what's lacking on the internet. You know, we in this community have that knowledge to go and correct people on. It isn't just are they ERI, SRN, although that can be handy. Um, just like we said, we know Roosevelt is not an introvert. There is no way when you look at the tra trajectory of his life. Um, we know we can look at the functions, the temperaments, the interaction styles, which come in so handy. Um, and and talk about the last one because that was so key with how we you helped us. Yeah, yeah. I I feel very strongly about holding your theory lightly so you don't fall into this idea of the confirmation bias, where you start looking for things to support what you initially believe or what somebody has told you is, could be this person's personality and let the data shape the impression. I can't tell you how long of a process this was when Jane and I were going back and forth and we were ready, literally ready to talk about ESTP versus ENTJ. We were really, that was what the, the presentation was gonna be. 
and I was sitting on an airplane on my way to the safari looking for quotes and I said, Jane, let's look at this again. Maybe there's something else here. So then we both started looking and it was like, whoa, wait a minute. When we put aside mm -hmm. what we had originally believed mm -hmm. and really started looking deeper and looking at all these lenses, we realized that, you know, this was, it was a different type. It was a different type. And one of the things that I think that came up with both of us as we were going back and forth is thinking about people we knew in our own lives that would support a particular position. So, <laughs> you know, the, the, you have an ENTJ daughter, so that led you to, oh, I can see, you know, Mari okay. doing this. And it was really about that superhighway that you were really looking at. Um, and then I was for a while saying, well, God, he sounds more like an ENFP to me. I was thinking yeah. about that because I was seeing the people piece of it, but that was my, that was my personal, you know, perspective, my personal lens. And then when you just hold that theory lightly and just start opening your pot, your eyes to the idea, it could be something else. Um, it's really when it really got to be a lot. I, that's when it got to be a really fun, I thought. I, I like the whole idea of working hypothesis because then it, it, it's staying that you're, it's just a moment in time and you're still exploring. <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, and we also talked about the, the idea of looking to see where your data is starting to stick together, where you're starting to see sort of a ball form um, and, and, you know, what's in there, you know, what, what does that look like and really examining what keeps coming up again and again and again and again. Well, and even as I, because I, I put the final quotes together from everything that Anne had sent to me, and I was aware that I might have been tipping the scale toward ISF when I was picking quotes for Taft, and, and in a way that maybe helped your uh, discussion, but yeah. I mean, the book is, I mean, this is the large print edition. It is a rather lengthy tome, so it was hard once we had our hypotheses. <laughs> get our bias out of what we were selecting. That was it's, really it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so good you, job. Got you all, go back and look at it, you, you may um, say, wait a minute, there is evidence that Taft could have been an extrovert, but um, that's what's part of the fun. We, we need to close down, but if you, know, if you have something to add in the chat room, perhaps on principles we missed on how do we do our, you know, there's, there is merit. Like we said, it's the pitfalls and the promises. There are reasons to think about, um, are great leaders and um, obviously we short shift you know, there are great leaders in the UK that we could have talked about as well and we apologize we just love this book so much that that was <laughs> why we chose it um, but what else, you know add to the chat room what other principles should we be sticking to when we are hypothesizing um, there is that ethical consideration that the person should no longer be alive or we should be talking to them them <laughs> about what their type is <laughs> so Oh, no great leaders in the mo UK at the moment. Well, you notice we're not talking current leadership either. Uh, although uh, we're pretty impressed you know, with the head of the New England Patriots it, right now who procured 1.2 million N85 masks. I was uh, going to say in the, the other thing is. I just, I am, I'm, I'm just sort of sensitive to time. You know, we're on yeah. a, I'm, so just a closing thought, I yeah, would my, be great. My closing thought is, is it doesn't make typing from afar worthless if you can't hit it right on, but it's the idea of keep staying open-minded. I think because yeah. it is useful. That's what we use. That's what we use all the time to interact better with people. So you know, it's not shutting it down, but it's opening it up. I hope for you ultimately. Well, thank you, thank you both. I mean, I love looking at the tool. I love the reinforcement that we absolutely cannot. Let's do the round of applause. We absolutely we discredit the type community when we go out and go. Well, this person is obviously a this without any and. and presenting it as a done deal rather than as a working hypothesis. It, it re-emphasizes that we're putting people in boxes with not enough information, which is one of the things people dislike about type. Mm -hmm. So let's thank you.